quick introduction to scanning capacitance microscopy and scanning spreading resistance, which seem to be two of the popular techniques today. Um, I will start with scanning capacitance. Um, the idea behind this is that your tip and your sample uh, together form a metal oxide semiconductor uh, capacitor. Um, if we apply an AC bias between these two, we alternately get depletion and accumulation of charge carriers beneath the, the surface. But then the SCM sensor, which we see on the right, is basically a radio frequency uh, resonator, which is loaded by this tip and sample. Um, this is the um, sensor is similar to the circuit we see here, which is an inductor and capacitor in series. So the resonance peak we actually get is a function of the um, inductance, which in this case is constant, and the capacitance, um, which is changing with the de depletion and accumulation beneath the surface. So um, as we're scanning, we're always at the same frequency, operating at the same frequency. These resonance changes cause a, a change in the output of the sensor. Okay, just to step back a little bit, this is our tip sample interaction. Over here on the right is our sensor. We're gonna take the output from the sensor and put it into a lock-in amplifier. And then the reference for that lock-in amplifier is going to be the AC signal um, that we're applying to the, the sample and tip. So with that, we get out our output signal. We can look at both amplitude phase um, that we get from the lock-in amplifier. So we're looking at the change of capacitance with the change of voltage. Okay, so if we look at CV curves for a typical uh, MOS capacitor. So on the left is an N MOS and on the right is a P MOS. So they're basically the same for a given uh, dopant concentration. They're just reversed from each other uh, with a phase change of 180 degrees. So what we're actually doing in scanning capacitance, we're, we're sampling a part of that curve by applying an AC bias here. So then we're getting an amplitude out. So again, for, for two opposite types of uh, capacitors, we get the same amplitude out for the same doping. Um, it's just that the, the phase signal is 180 degrees off from each other. So we can get some nice information from this because we can get both amplitude and phase from one technique. Um, the other thing you need to be aware of for SEM is that if we have a material which has both high and low doping concentrations, um, for high doping concentrations, we actually get less of a capacitance change uh, with voltage. We can imagine this by thinking that for a given voltage, if you have a higher concentration of dopant, you get less depletion underneath the tip than you would with a, a low dope concentration. So we actually get higher signal and we're more uh, sensitive to lower doping concentrations and higher doping concentrations in scanning capacitance. So if you look at what type of signals we can get, the structure on the, the left where we have a combination of highly doped and lowly doped both PN and structures, uh, we get an amplitude signal out from the um, lock and amplifier. So on the left and right, which are the lowly doped BNN, we get a high signal out because it's lowly doped. And in the middle section where we have P plus and N plus, we get actually get a lower signal um, from them. Then if we look at the phase component from the lock and amplifier, we get uh, one direction for P, and opposite 180, the other sense for the end. So we can actually combine these into a, a sing, single signal, which we call SEM quad on our systems. So we get, you can see we get a uh, high response for uh, low P and low N, and then the lower responses for, for, low, for high, highly doped P and highly doped N. Okay, so as uh, Thomas referred to in the, the previous talk, um, the data we actually get out is qualitative, so we need to have some uh, method to quantify the data. So one of the standard um, methods to do this or standard techniques is this dopant staircase, which he, he showed. And what I want you to, to show you here is that we actually get a, a wide range of uh, dopant concentrations that we can measure. So from 10 to the 20th all the way down to 10 to the 15th. Okay, on to SSRM. Um, this is much, simpler uh, conceptually and theoretically than scanning capacitance. We're simply bringing a, a conductive probe into contact with the sample and we're applying a DC bias between the two and measuring the, the, the current uh, that flows for that. Um, in SSRM, it should be noted that we use a logarithmic 
uh, amplifier because since there can be a, such a large range and uh, dopant concentration, uh, the current values you can measure um, are widely variant. Um, he also uh, noted on the, the last presentation that it's important to have a lot of force between the tip and the sample here, because what we typically want to do is we want to make the contact resistance between the tip and the sample negligible so that we're only measuring the spreading resistance, which is a function of the resistivity uh, of the sample and the area of contact between the tip and the sample. Okay, so as he mentioned we need to put relatively high force into this to scratch away any native oxide surfaces, especially on silicon. Uh, we can see in red we have the curve with high force, so we're able to greatly reduce the resist resistance that we encounter, uh, opposed to, to lighter um, scanning that we see in the green. Again, we see a dopant level staircase here, so this is just to give you an idea of some of the resolution that we can see. So we're going from 10 to the 19th down to 10 to the 17th here, and we see very clear um, structures here. And the important thing to note also is that uh, in SSRM, as opposed to SCM, we're more sensitive to the, the higher doping concentrations to the lower, lower doping concentrations. So just a brief comparison um, between the two. So uh, the big advantage of SSRM is resolution. A typical resolution for SCM is 25 nanometers or greater. We actually get a higher signal the duller the tip is because we have a larger depletion zone. Um, and SSRM is typically less than 10 nanometers, so I was very happy to hear that they're getting routinely one. Um, the range of dopant concentrations we can measure are approximately the same. Um, tips are definitely a difference. Um, we're, for SEM, we're using either full metal or metal coated tips with low stiffness uh, cantilevers. Um, we can get away with that, whereas in SSRM, since we need such high force, we're basically uh, designated to just diamond, the dope diamond tips. Um, another advantage of SSRM is that we actually get signal on metals as well as the semiconductors. We see more of the structure. Um, the advantage of the SCM is that obviously with the phase, we get information on both doping as well as amplitude. Okay. Uh, the last thing I would like to mention is that in order to get good images for either technique, sample preparation is absolutely critical. Um, so typically we're looking at um, cross sections to look at devices. Um, so traditionally people have just used a glass cover slide or something like that uh, to make sure that when we're doing mechanical uh, polishing afterwards that we don't get any uh, edge effects or anything like this. Um, the last talk mentioned doing FIB. Uh, at least at the beginning, we tried to avoid this because uh, it can affect the doping concentrations we measure, but I know there are techniques to overcome that. Um, so typically we look at um, mechanical polishing where we start with a very coarse diamond to remove the material and then we finish with something like a colloidal silica um, to get a, a, a fine mirror polish because if there are any scratches there, we're definitely gonna affect the image quality. Um, and one last thing on scanning capacitance, since we need a nice native oxide to get good images, we typically do a heat treatment around 250 to 350 degrees C for 10, 15 minutes and expose the sample to UV light during this to eliminate any type of uh, trap charges. So uh, with this, I will pass the baton on to Andreas to finish the presentation. Mm -hmm.